Hi, everyone at Fuller Theological Seminary, and I want to thank Fuller for inviting me to respond to my friend, Dr. Jose Abraham, regarding intercultural evangelism among caste Hindus, its challenges and opportunities. Jesus Christ commenced his ministry by proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, urging individuals to repent and undergo a change of heart, commonly referred to as conversion. However, the matter of conversion to Christianity, which includes baptism and the subsequent socio-cultural displacement of converts in some places around the world, has long been a contentious issue in India. This socio-cultural displacement is a matter of great concern, particularly among the caste Hindus, because the caste system has perpetuated the marginalization of outcasts and the untouchables who now identify themselves as Dalits, relegating them to the lowest echelon of society with no prospects of upward social mobility. Consequently, when presented with the gospel, Dalits eagerly embrace the possibility of their socio-economic and religious improvement that conversion to Christianity offered. They sought out Christian communities or mission compounds in pursuit of social equality and dignity. Indeed, Dalits had nothing to lose except their oppressive shackles and long-standing subjugation. Since, as Lobo puts it, the untouchables were in search of equality and betterment for their status by escaping from the tyranny, rigidity, exploitation, and oppression they suffered in Hindu society. However, the situation diverged for caste Hindus who enjoyed a privileged position in society. For them, accepting the good news and converting to another faith implied relinquishing their privileged status within the community to join a congregation comprised of so-called impure mass converts drawn from the outcasts and the indigenous tribes. Consequently, Caste Hindus have strongly opposed conversion to Christianity. Therefore, today I would like to briefly talk about some of the reasons behind the aversion of caste Hindus to Christian evangelism and called for conversion. My understanding is informed by my personal experience of being born and raised as a Hindu in India. For almost two decades, I studied the response of caste Hindus to the gospel, which led me to do an ethnography for my doctoral research in Varanasi in northern India. There, I interviewed over 250 caste Hindus who claimed to profess their faith in Jesus Christ as their God, but continued to identify themselves as Hindus. But before we delve deeper into the subject matter, it is essential to provide some contextual background on Indian Christianity. Contrary to the popular misconception that Christianity was solely introduced to India by European missionaries, it, it, it is important to acknowledge the existence of a Christian community that traces its origins to the first century. This claim finds support in the beliefs of the Syrian Christian community in Kerala, a southern state in India, and their long-standing tradition of the apostolate of St. Thomas. Indeed, historical evidence indisputably substantiates the presence of Christianity in Kerala as early as the third century. It is noteworthy, however, that this community did not actively embark on evangelistic endeavors beyond the confines of Kerala. One of the reasons could be the linguistic and cultural barriers they faced in sharing the gospel with outsiders because 
the Indian subcontinent has been an a uh, convergent point for a myriad of cultural and religious traditions that contribute to its multicultural and multilingual identity. Consequently, individuals continuously, continuously seek understanding while redefining their socio-religious identities through numerous means. These dynamics become particularly relevant in Christian missions when people inexorably bring much of their religio-cultural traditions with them when encountering and responding to the gospel message. No wonder issues pertaining to race, ethnicity, and identity have emerged as some of today's most pressing concerns. Given this backdrop, it is crucial to consider how caste Hindus who decide to follow Jesus Christ grapple with these challenges in India and beyond. Many of them engage in a process of negotiating, that is, seeking to redefine their traditional Hindu identity within the framework of their newfound bhakti, that is, devotion to Jesus Christ. Thus, it becomes an essential subject for our reflection today. Meanwhile, in Europe, the late 19th and early 20th century marked a special period of imperialistic expansion by the West, coinciding with a surge in evangelistic efforts by foreign missionary societies in India. However, this convergence led to the conflation of evangelism with Western imperialism. The missionaries and the British government of India appeared to be working hand in hand, despite the government's official policy of religious neutrality. This perception resulted in the missionaries being seen as an extension of the British Raj, which was viewed negatively by the growing number of Indians. But to the common people, colonialism and mission, mission were seen as intertwined. So when they arrived in India, the European missionaries encountered one of the most diverse regions on earth in terms of its geography, religions, cultures, and languages that diverged from one small kingdom to the other. Although there were different streams of thinking within European evangelism, there was a consensus in their approach towards India's religious and cultural diversity. Missionaries were expected to stay out of politics and accept the authority of the British Raj, judging its policies based on their political impact on conversion. In practice, conversion meant not only a spiritual change, but also an open declaration of loyalty to Christ and membership in the institutional church. Baptism became the barometer to measure the success or failure of evangelization, overshadowing other efforts that aimed at internal transformation of an individual. This evangelistic fervor occurred against the background of a political upheaval in early 20th century India, where the Indians were united in demanding that the British leave India. European missionaries, for the most part, remained indifferent to the hopes and aspirations of the people, distancing themselves from public engagement. Consequently, Hindu neighbors viewed converts from their community as denationalized and unpatriotic. Another major challenge the European missionaries encountered in India was its social structure, a society stru structured by the Hindu caste system that placed people in a pyramidal model. Certain people on the top of the pyramid enjoyed all the privileges while others were placed at the bottom 
and some were even outside the bottom rung of the pyramid. Uh, they were made to serve by God, it is believed, uh, those who were on the top. Those outside this pyramidic structure were literally the outcasts, the Dalits, and the, they were treated less than human through the practice of untouchability. Despite their sincere efforts, missionaries struggled to make an impact on educated caste Hindus, leading them to focus on Dalits and indigenous people groups. This resulted in their mass movements toward the Christian church, which were often driven by socio-economic and religious political factors. The conversions, the conversions of Dalits created tensions within the larger Hindu community as it was perceived as a model of communal aggression and a threat to Hindu existence. Baptism of a convert symbolized triangulation with one's past and assimilation into European ways. Burdening the young Indian churches with a historical legacy. This mass conversion sparked a hatred of the church's evangelism among caste Hindus, leaders of the Indian nationalist movement, including the great Mahatma Gandhi, openly criticized mass, mass conversions. Uh, and he accused missionaries of taking advantage of the untouchable situation. Gandhi's opposition to conversion was rooted in the Hindu philosophy of equality of religion and the belief that, they, uh, that the all religions were same or equal. However, it is worth noting that Mahatma Gandhi's opposition was primarily directed towards proselytism. The changing of religious tags without any spiritual change. He believed that India did not need conversion from one faith to another as most caste Hindus share the view that all religions are equal and can be accommodated within their pantheon of beliefs. However, they object to the conversion from Hinduism to Christianity because it is still seen as a foreign religion and a threat to their social, religious, and cultural identity. Hindus perceive conversion as a mere change of external denomination with ulterior motives rather than a genuine transformation of one's faith. So how do we go about redeeming intercultural evangelism, especially among the caste Hindus? The aversion to conversion among certain groups cannot be reason for shunning evangelism altogether as some Christians have indeed done. The nature of the gospel that we believe in demands that we share it with others as we respond to the needs of humanity. But we must have an approach to evangelism that departs from the traditional evangelical understanding of evangelism as solely focused on saving souls. Instead, as E. Stanley Jones had advocated, the goal and motive of Christian evangelism is to, is to produce Christ-like character. The caste Hindus as a group of people, I believe, are still neglected in terms of focused evangelistic ministry and engagement with their issues. Some of the few issues or the key issues that I have found during my research in Varanasi in India is their reluctance to be baptized and maintaining their Hindu identity despite believing in Christ as their God. I personally met and fellowshiped with hundreds of followers of Christ. I found that there is a considerable number of caste Hindus who are open to Jesus Christ and his teachings, and some are even uh, believing Jesus Christ as their God. However, they either delay or reject baptism, and they, all of them that I met, continue to identify themselves as Hindus. 
The church must continually address this issue in India in its theology and practice of evangelism. Given that contemporary affirmations on ethnicity, racism, nationalism, religious strife, and the politics of national identity worldwide are intertwined with the construction of self and other identities, it is imperative for missiologists, especially from the majority world context, to recognize this issue as an opportunity to reassess our theories and practices that we have inherited in missions. You see, the Christian missionaries operating in predominantly monocultural or culturally Christian settings commonly presumed that individuals could identify with a singular religion or profess a single religious identity or no religious identity, which they often conflated with their cultural identity. However, this Eurocentricity of Christian identity is rejected today by many non-Western and Western Christians alike. It is becoming more apparent today that individuals hold multifaceted identities that extend beyond a singular religious affiliation. Globalization and intercultural interactions have played significant roles in shaping contemporary identities, resulting in people integrating multiple religious beliefs and embracing diverse cultural customs. Consequently, individuals are not constrained to adhere strictly to one clear-cut religious affiliation or a solitary faith tradition alone. This necessitates a deconstruction of existing notions that portray Christian identity as monolithic and homogeneous. In, instead, we must embrace a broader understanding of identity and belonging within increasingly multi-religious settings while acknowledging that religious identities serve as dynamic texts of our cultures. When Christ followers assert their identity as Hindus in India, they are referencing an ethno-cultural tradition that places greater emphasis on performative aspects rather than belief systems. This raises relevant questions. Can individuals maintain their cultural and ethnic Hindu identity while professing Jesus Christ as their Lord? Is it practical to follow Jesus Christ and lead a life consistent with his teachings within India's diverse society? The possibility of answering such questions affirmatively exists for those who believe in transcontextual missions because to become Christian after belonging to a non-Christian tradition does not necessarily mean alienation from either the previous cultural and ethnic identity or from one's previous religious identity. Identity being a fluid concept and identity quest always being influenced by context remains an unfinished construct that is engaged in a dialectic negotiating with the challenges it encounters. From this perspective, the quest for identity among Hindu followers of Jesus Christ may not have universal acceptability across diverse cultures. However, it holds relevance to the emergence of novel forms of indigenous Christianities around the world. 
if its corollary were to manifest later as a Hindu Christianity, I believe it would serve as a valuable complement to the diverse spectrum of Christianities, a vibrant flower adorning a beautiful garland would be Hindu Christianity among global or world Christianities. Thank you very much for the opportunity given to me once again. And I wish you all the best who are attending in person or online from around the world. Take care.